All right, guys, I hope we're live. It's John, I'm back. And today I have a very nice treat for you guys. We're playing a live blitz match with Grandmaster Nicolas Hushin Bet from Germany. And I see the stream is going live right now. Match is gonna start in about five minutes or so. All right, we got a bunch of people in the chat saying the stream is good. So, hello, David, hello, Tybalt. Ah, we got Tybalt, the Lee Chess mastermind in the chat. Hello to you, Tybalt. How's, how's it going in France? Anton, Cozy, Emil, thank you guys for right, guys. waking up alive. and uh, joining joining me here. i got to mute my actual stream so you don't hear double audio. Squash Addict says he can see me. All right. How does the stream look, guys? Does it look pretty good? I added in the YouTube chat so you guys can see that as the match is played. I think that might be nice when you're going back and looking at the archived recording. So hopefully you like that feature. Um, I haven't played much on Chess24, so my um, my experience on this site is limited. And as we get a little bit closer to the start time, which is going to be any minute now, uh, I'll tell you guys about a small change that we had to make. All right, people are saying it's good. Vince says, Spain reads me loud, loud and clear. All right, awesome. Yeah, this is a much more friendly time for the vast majority of my viewers because, you know, it's... Um, it's noon on the East Coast here in the U.S. Uh, Pacific time, they're just waking up. And in Europe, uh, it's like early evening. So glad you guys were able to tune in. Excellent, excellent. Everything is going as it should. So the change that we had to make, uh, Nicholas sent me a message this morning. He said that there's going to be a power outage in his building right at 1 o'clock p.m. Eastern, which is like almost exactly an hour from now. So we got to end this match in about 50 or 55 minutes. So we decided to change the time control from four plus two to three plus one. So it'll be three minutes with a one second increment. And uh, we're still gonna play to five points. Uh, if the match is for some reason still going after 50 or 55 minutes, we're just gonna call it. I said, you know, just feel free to terminate the match. I don't want your power to go out in the middle of a game. That would be ridiculous. This is just a fun match, kind of an exhibition match really. So, um, yeah, that's the only change we've made. Okay. Jeffrey says, hey, John, first time viewing the stream. I've been watching your videos for a while now. They really helped me improve in chess. Cool. Glad to hear that. Good luck from Poland. Thanks, Christoph. I'm just going to send Nicholas a quick message on Skype, just telling him that I'm ready. Yep. So, looks like he's all ready to go. So we're going to do this in a second. I've never played a Blitz game on Chess24. I've played Bullet, though, so I feel okay about this interface. So I'm hoping uh, everything goes properly. Thank you guys for waking up early, especially you, Squash Addict. Wow, 3 a.m. in Australia? That's some dedication right there. Did you actually sleep, or did you, uh, <laughs> did you just stay up for this? Because if so, that's impressive. I guess it's a Saturday going into Sunday, so maybe it's not so bad to stay awake on a Saturday night. I can't berserk this game. <laughs> this is not Lee Chess. I can't berserk. <laughs> so I'm just waiting for Nicolas to challenge me. Oh, actually, I think this is it. Okay, so here we go. First game of the match coming at you guys right here. And I am white. I'm going to play D4 to start out. I'm just going to tell him good luck. And have fun. Okay, so I like the one second increment. You know, three minutes is pretty fast, but with the one second increment, you know, you can play a pretty high quality game. Okay, so Nimzo Indian. I didn't do any preparation for this match, so I have no idea what he's going to play. He plays b6. Okay, let's just play knight f3. We'll keep it simple. I'm going to play a move that's a little bit dubious, but I hope he doesn't know how to take advantage. G3. I played this before and I've gotten away with it. The best move, I believe, for black is knight c6, as I recall. Trying to threaten knight takes d4. Okay, he plays c5. That's a logical move. Uh, let's just take that. By the way, hello to you viewers from Chess24. Uh, some of you guys might not know me or my stream, but um, I understand that they embedded this stream on the Chess24 website. 
So thank you guys so much for tuning in if you came from Chess24. Um, I post videos every day, uh, either Bullet, Blitz, or Standard online. And I usually play on ICC or Lee Chess or Chess.com. Haven't played much on Chess24, but maybe that will change in the future. Oh yeah, and of course I've got my coffee. It's, it's very early. I would not be functioning without this. 11 a.m. is kind of early for a chess player, you know, so uh, I need my my liquid, my liquid courage. <laughs> that means coffee, not alcohol. <laughs> All right, Rook D1. So I'm just taking control over the file. I'm trying to x-ray that queen. Um, so if I play Bishop F4 looking to go Bishop D6, is he going to play Knight D4? Is that the point of his last move? Kind of seems like it. Bishop F4, Knight D4, Knight takes. Now oh, but that's got to turn out well for me. Huh. Bishop f4, knight d4, knight takes, because this bishop is hanging. Yeah, I think this is good. And in three minutes, it's really important to make quick decisions. You know, you can't you can't linger too long on one move. Because if you do, you're dead in the water. Even with the one second increment, I think it's a really bad idea to spend too much time. Okay, so here I'm considering fracturing my structure with a move like b takes c3. It's kind of radical, but Actually, let's give it a shot, because I want to control the d4 square. That's the point of this move. So he can't play knight d4. I got this pin going. Maybe one threat is bishop takes f6, and then if his queen takes, there's rook takes d7. So perhaps I can cause him some trouble. Okay, here knight f5 looks, lo or knight h4 rather, trying to get into f5 looks logical. I also open up this diagonal. This seems kind of dangerous for him. So right now I'm hoping that my dynamic potential in my position kind of compensates for um, some other factors. Okay, so some tempting moves at my disposal here. I mean, just, just rook b1 looks pretty good. Also, bishop d5. Let's go rook b1. What's he going to do about that? Because I'm threatening, obviously, rook takes b7, and if he defends it with a move like uh, rook b8, I can take b7 anyways and play bishop takes c6. I'll have two minor pieces for the rook. That's fantastic for white. There's so many good moves, though. Like I was saying, bishop d5 came to mind. Knight f5 came to mind. Yeah, so now I get this move in. Let's just do this. So two pieces. Hmm. Bishop d5, he's going to take it. Um, I mean, I don't know if I care about that much. Let's just bring this back. I'll let him take c4, because I can take here and really damage his structure. I don't think he wants to bother with taking this pawn, to be quite honest. Yeah, he's just going to force this swap. So let's get this in. Want to attack d6. Let's go here, queen d3. So just kind of preempting rook b2. He's got to go for some counterplay with the rooks, but that's not going to be easy in the current position. I mean, long term, I'd like to play knight e3 to d5. Yeah, so he kind of addresses that. Okay, so let's get this going. Try to get into the d5 square. I'm expecting rook b2. Mm-hmm. Let's just play rook d2 to be safe. Can I pre-move that? Yep. So we have an excellent opportunity to score in the first game here. Uh, let's play this. Just get the knight into a juicy square. Let's play king g2. Just make sure no queen h3 comes. He's lashing out with f5. I got this move. This is nifty. And if he takes knight e7. So I think he overlooked this. Just pre-move that. Now we're hitting d6 a couple times. Looks like he has to play rook b6 to defend. Let's give it a check. Let's play g4 to support the knight. Yeah, this position is too much. Okay, let's come here and try to get our knight into e4 now. I think that would be an excellent plan. Knight e4 check. He's going to play king e7, though. Let's come here, actually. Because he can't bring the rook in due to rook takes d6, so that's the point of this. So I've got excellent control over the position now with my 
material plus the miners. Ooh, don't go there. Why was I thinking about that move? Let's just bring our king up a little bit. I was getting ahead of myself. I was thinking of like um, this g5 and knight f6 plan. Okay, let's just attack his rook for the time being. Hmm, maybe bishop here. Time's getting a little low for both of us. Does that threaten anything? I don't think so. I think I can take this. This king is laid bare to the elements. Yeah, now I'm going to check on d7 and then play my knight into f6. This is looking very dire for him. Bishop e6 coming to complete the mating net. Let's just bring this up to defend. Maybe I can even march my king all the way in. Can very nearly just do that. Let's just take a pawn. Just to make this super unpleasant for him. Now I'm kind of forking these two rooks. Um, that move I didn't see. <laughs> I hope I don't get perpetual here. Huh. Uh, let's run this pawn. Oh boy. This is not good. I'm going to try to march my king in. Oh boy, I think I created a mating net though. Well, that was going great until I dropped my bishop, but I'm still going to win the game, it seems. Yeah, he plays a move too. Just forced all mate. Oh, I had rook a8 mate, but it doesn't matter. Mm. All right, so we take that first game. Ian says, hey, John, love the new layout. Thanks, Ian. Yeah. All right, and I think he's going to challenge me. He said he's going to challenge me every game because Nicholas is a little more familiar with the interface. I like that game. I think that was well played by me for the majority of it up until the end. I probably messed up my technique a bit right at the end. I think, um, what did he play that kind of caught me off guard? Rook g2. I should just play something like f3 against that in hindsight. I shouldn't let him take on f2 with check. I thought I was going to be forking his rooks, but of course they can defend each other. So that's kind of silly. So yeah, I should have just played f3 and you know, white's going to win. I could probably even play king e5 and, you know, march the king up and bring it into e6 and threaten rook f7 mate. Okay, I got to click on challenges. All right, so I know Nicholas is an e4 player. So what are we doing at uh, 11 in the morning? d5. He took that really fast. That was like he was prepared for that. Okay, we'll play the queen d8 Scandinavian to start. Nicholas, have you been doing your homework? You know I like the Queen D8 Scandinavian. <laughs> I guess it's not exactly a, a secret. Uh, so let's go Knight BD7. Oh, Queen G3. That's kind of a unusual but interesting move. Hmm. Well, let's play Knight H5 and just try to disturb that Queen for a moment. Just see where he goes with that. Because Queen G3, like the idea is to keep control over um, g7, so prevent my bishop from developing. So he just moves back to h2. What if I play queen b8 and offer a trade? Would he really play g3 to avoid the trade? Because that seems pretty extreme to do that. So now he agrees to the trade. I've been in these type of queenless middle games a lot as a Scandinavian player. You know, you, um, you're you seeding white some space plus uh, the bishop pair, but you have such a compact position that it's difficult for white to make progress. You know, like they're always going to run into that inherent solidity of your position. Does that drop a pawn? Because I think I can take and then play knight f6. And then this bishop's hanging and this pawn is hanging. So that looks like a pawn to me. Bishop d3, rook takes d4, bishop e3. Rook a4 to defend the a pawn. I guess I'm holding on to it. Yeah, let's just come over here. Looks like an odd place for the rook, but otherwise he's going to play rook take, uh, bishop takes a7. So I think it's okay. Mm hmm. All right, bishop b4 check or rook a3. Let's go rook a3. Once again, kind of a strange looking square, but. 
I want to keep my rook somewhere where it defends the pawn, and a5 was the only other square. I think this would be helpful, though, in blocking the a-pawn. Hmm. Maybe knight d7 and try to bring it to c5 or something. Bishop b4 check also comes to mind. Uh, bishop b4 check, king e2, bishop here. Yeah, that looks good. I think. So I'm trying to get that rook to move so I can take that pawn on a2. He can play bishop c1 and counterattack my rook, but then I'm moving my rook back, like rook a5 or a6 or something. All right, Scandi going to work now. It's interesting being able to monitor the chat on my stream. So I, I think that's a good add-in. Hmm. So let's take with check. Not that I'm getting help from the stream. Of course, that would be kind of ridiculous. But uh, OK, bishop e5 or bishop b4? e5 controls a1, but b4 seems more secure for some reason. Huh. I'm going to go to b4. Because I know he can play rook a1, but that's a trade. And I think after the trade, I can play like pawn a6. And I've got everything defended. I'm up two pawns. Should bode well for me. OK, so let's just play a6. So I'm going to try to put pawns on light squares to restrict that light square bishop of his. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Probably castle. I think castling's our best bet. If king e7, I thought g5 might be annoying, so I didn't play that. Okay, so I should be doing well here in hopefully consolidating the position. Uh, if rook d8, rook d8, king e3, that's well, still a opportunity to get this into play with a gain of time. Let's just come here. So bishop c5 is one move I can try with this idea. I might have to squeeze him in like an opposite color bishop position, but on the whole, I think this should be excellent. Okay, so now that I have that, ah, he can play bishop takes h7. Oh, I blundered big time. Yeah, I blundered big time there. Completely overlooked bishop takes h7. That was a bad idea. Poor play. Oh, you got to watch those tactics, guys. <laughs> I thought I was cruising, and he set up a, something really sneaky with rook d1, but I, I obviously should have seen that. So this, this ending probably should be losing. Um, hmm, surprised he played that move. All right, let's just get our king up. I thought he was going to go rook d7, but maybe he didn't like that for some reason. OK, so here, rook there. So he wants king d4 next move. That's what he wants to do. OK, let's do this. This is kind of strange, but I'm going to sack a pawn and then try to run my a pawn. Because now if king d4, he loses to knight e6. That's the point of my play. I'm a little worried about that h pawn. Maybe i got to eliminate g5, though. Got to try to take the g5 pawn and then make sure he can't advance. Yeah, that's, that's probably a smart idea by him. King d2, is that how he's going to deal with these pawns? Yes, indeed. All right, what to do? Because I'm kind of stuck right here. <clears throat> I can't play b5. Maybe I can play b5. No, b5 rook takes c6, of course. Check. Check king c3. All right, let's just do this. I'm really not sure what to do, though. All right, I'm going to give this pawn and then try to come with my knight and win this. This is the only thing I can think of right now. Yeah, he keeps that defended. Oh, what to do? All right, b5. He traded. OK, that makes me feel a little bit better. Now maybe I can go after that h4 pawn. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is a draw. Hope 
Hopefully I don't blow this Rook and Knight versus. <laughs> All right, he offered a gentleman's draw. So thank you, Nicholas, for not pressing that. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is a pretty easy theoretical draw. King and Knight versus King and Rook. The only danger is if um, the King and the Knight are on the side of the board. If they're kind of caught on the edge of the board, then it's it's trouble. Okay, so bad technique by me because I allowed that Bishop takes H7 idea. I was just kind of oblivious to that. Like when he played it, it was a little hidden because where was that moment? You have to watch out for kind of veiled tactics. He's got two bishops on that that same file as the Rook and. I just let my guard down for a moment and played bishop c5. Someone said missed the fork. Was I winning with the fork at the end? Huh, I don't know. All right, I'm waiting on Nicolas's challenge. There we go. Next game. Okay, let's play... Should we go back to the well? No, let's, let's mix it up. Let's play knight f3. We might have a symmetrical English. A good old symmetrical English. Hmm. Let's play G3. I know E3 is perhaps a little trendier, but I don't I don't know it as well. I actually have pretty poor results in this line, to be quite honest, but <laughs> it's fun. It's fun to play. Uh, let's go for this line, D4. This is kind of sharp. Knight B5, and I'm threatening to take D4, and I'm also threatening to come into D6. Okay, this stuff gets really weird. How does this go? Bishop F4 now? Is it bishop f4 right away? Yeah, I think it's bishop f4 right away, threatening knight c7. I'm hoping he doesn't know this, because I don't. And that will balance itself out with his hopeful lack of knowledge. So those tuning in from Chess24, once again, who don't know about me, uh, I'm an IM from the US. My fee day is about 2450. Uh, I live in Minnesota. And uh, I have one GM norm. So e5, I'm thinking about taking here, because but if I take, he takes, huh, let's actually play bishop g5 first, and if he checks, I'll play the bishop back to d2. Okay, so I was thinking about taking, does that work out tactically though? I'm really not sure. Take. He takes g5, I take c6, he goes check. It doesn't look like it works tactically for me. This is what happens when you play a sharp line and you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to think about this for 20 more seconds. Take, if he takes here, that's just bad. Take, queen a5, check. Knight d2, he takes b5. I don't have anything there. I think I got to go back, as bad as that seems. I know he can take c4 now. Yeah, this is just awful. Okay, I'm going to try to win this pawn back. With my tail in between my legs. Look at this pawn chain he has. <laughs> Not good. I do have to work on my openings. I think my openings are... Uh, a little rusty at the moment. Okay, he's just gonna give the pawn back. That's probably a smart idea. He'll just castle. Um, hmm. Let's play knight e1. This is a line I will not repeat against Niklas. I can guarantee you that. Okay, let's just go here to try to bother him. Attack that rook. Yeah, he plays something logical again. Okay, we'll come here. If e4, at least I can get into f4. It's something. Or maybe c5? Maybe. Attack that pawn. Of course, being a grandmaster and very experienced player, he's probably not going to allow me a lot of counterplay here. How to be lost with white in 10 moves. Books that I never want to write. I don't know. It's blitz, though. So there's always swindling chances, right? Let's go a4. Just try to gain some space. I have no play on the king side. Uh, f4 looks really bad. 
Knight b4. Okay, I'm going to try knight b4 because I don't honestly don't see what else to do. Try to get my bishop operating on the a a3 f8 diagonal. Hmm. At least that knight's pinned for now. Maybe I can play queen d2 and connect my rooks. Oh, he trades. Okay. Let's keep material on board. I think he wants to play knight c6 to a5 after he unpins the rook. So I'd expect rook f7 or rook e8. Yeah, that's perfectly logical. Can I do this? That allows knight d5. I better bring this back because that's not doing anything. He shuts it out. Let's go f3. Maybe I should have taken that knight on e7, but I'm suffering no matter what here. The best I can hope for is to devolve this game into a time scramble and hope for a miracle. Okay, rook f7, king g8. Rook f7, king g8. Um, mm, Alright, I'll try it. It looks like it could be semi-dangerous. King g8, maybe rook d7. All right, let's come in here. Oh, that's that's something I missed. Yeah, that's resigns worthy immediately. I'll play, I'll play this just, I don't know, cheapo with queen f6. But queen f6 is not even a threat. You can always play rook g8. Okay, we're going to resign this game. Mm, bad game. We just didn't get out of the starting blocks in that game. I got to know the theory on this line if I'm going to go into it. I played this line once OTB, but it was against a pretty low-rated player, and they did not play the critical line. I wonder what it is, though, because it just seemed to me if I take on d5, like this line, then they take here, take, queen a5 check, unless there's some nuance here that I don't know about involving like a c takes b7 type thing. I don't know, like a4, try to push the queen away, but I doubt it. Okay, we're doing all right on time. we got about 30 more minutes we can potentially play. And it's even. Match is even. All right, let's 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 go back to this. I'm going to try the queen a5 line this time. Let's see what he has in store against that. He plays the main line with d4. I don't mind going into this so much. We might have to show the full range of the Scandi arsenal in this game. <laughs> okay, so he's playing, ooh, castles, kind of a trendy move. I think this is a, a newer idea, castling short. So knight d7, I probably want to castle queen side still, so hence the way we're playing it. Let's go queen c7. If knight h4, I'll pull this bishop back. Take on e6, and he plays it instantly. Hmm. Well, clearly I have to take that. Huh. Wow. So he's just kind of going for it. So if king f7, queen e2, bishop e7 is going to run into bishop b4, I think. All right. Well, let's play king f7. I think he's going to play queen e2, and I have to watch the queen transfer to, to c4. I think I'll play knight b6 in that case and attempt to coordinate. So I'm up a piece for two pawns, but in a blitz game, this looks pretty dangerous. Maybe even in a long game, too. It's possible that white has good compensation here. And he played that right away, so it makes me think like he might have looked at this before. <laughs> I mean, on the last move, my alternatives were bishop e7, which didn't look promising due to that bishop b4 move, pinning my bishop, and also king d8, which also didn't look so good. Okay, so queen c4. Yeah, or sorry, knight b6 to stop queen c4. Probably he'll just triple up on the file now, I would expect. Mm-hmm. Hmm. hmm. So I got to watch the f6 pawn, because he could easily go after this. I'm going to play this. Am I? Yeah, let's do that. If take f6, king takes, queen e5, king f7, queen takes h8, 
At least then I've exchanged a few pieces. Maybe rook e8 there. Try to counterattack on the back rank. Hmm. Well, I've got a little bit of a time edge. I've been in these like tougher defensive situations before. Drag shoot says strong initiative for white. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> this is not fun. Okay, queen d5 perhaps? Rook d8. Queen d5 or rook d8, one of the two. Rook d8 might be unnecessary though. Bishop g7? Uh, Bishop g7 doesn't allow rook e7, but it doesn't look good either. Something about queen d5 kind of looks correct. Let's go with that. Just getting my queen off of that opposing diagonal. I control c4 with my queen and knight, so that's kind of nice. Maybe I can play rook g8 and try to get some threat on g2, I don't know. Someone says, have either of you been to the chess castle? Well, I think they were talking to someone else in the chat. The chess castle is uh, my hometown club here in the twin cities of Minneapolis and St. Paul. That's where I cut my teeth on chess, started playing as a kid. All right, so clear idea with that move is to play c4, no doubt about it. Uh, I can play like queen h5 or something when he does that, but maybe rook d8 is more useful. Yeah, let's go rook d8 and try to attack that d4 pawn. I need to stall him. I need to slow down his attack, and it looks like I've done a decent job of doing that for the moment. My bishop on f8 is monitoring that e7 square constantly, so that's nice. Thirty seconds for him. Queen f4 attacking the f6 square. See, now I was thinking about sacking my queen for two pieces. What about queen takes here? Is that possible? I think so. So if I take, 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 take bishop here at the end of that line. No, I think that's good for me. I think I can do that. Because this knight is hanging. So if he trades and then plays bishop c3, I take h4, he takes f6, I play king g8. I think I'm coming out of that on top. His rook takes f8. Okay, um, let's go rook d6 and just offer a trade. He can't really take us up on that trade, I don't think. Okay, now let's go here. He's got 10 seconds left. Um, let's play here and just look to swap a little bit. Let's play here to avoid any knight g5 tricks. Hmm, let's come here. Ooh, he's gonna have some trouble here, I believe. Okay, let's get this working. Bring our knight to a better square, threaten knight e4. Yep, and that's gonna win. We're attacking c3 and also hitting d4 twice. All right, so we survived that game. We have a two and a half to one and a half lead. Yeah, his, um, his sacrifice looked pretty good, but I don't know that it panned out so well. Um, I mean, it looked dangerous on the surface. Bishop takes e6, fe. But being a Scandinavian player, I've faced this type of sacrifice a lot of times before, and uh, it has to be a very specific circumstance that it'll work out for white. Because black does have quite a few defensive resources. But with the speed that he played it, that concerned me because that kind of made it seem like it was prep of some kind. All right, so next game, let's go back to d4. That uh, experiment in the symmetrical English did not pan out in the last game. We'll go back to this line. See if he wants to repeat. New move this time, castles. Okay, we'll play knight f3. This is a move that I played against Greg Shahadi recently. 
Very early c5. Okay, let's take that. Hmm. Yeah, this is a line. Okay, we'll just play g3. It goes knight takes c5, knight e4, castles, knight takes c3, pawn takes c3, bishop back to e7. I had an over the board game against Akshat Chandra on this line. Maybe a year and a half ago. And this is what you do. You rush the e-pawn down the board. This is supposed to be fine, though, for black, should they play it properly. Okay, I'll just go rook e1. I don't believe white has really demonstrated a advantage in this variation. It's actually quite drawish. Yeah, knight d7. I think I played bishop f4 in this case. Is that right? Yeah, bishop f4. Or is it queen e2? I'm going to go bishop f4. Okay, so he takes take here. Is he going to take c4? Nope, just plays bishop d6. Logical. Hmm. All right, let's keep this simple. And we'll go rook b1, attacking that pawn on b7. The problem is a lot of times black can just bail into a rook ending in this line. And it's not like vastly better for white or anything. Let's just come here and attack the queen. Maybe queen d3, looking to go queen d6. I stop rook d8 with that move too. It's something. If b6, queen d6, queen takes, rook takes, that ending might be like a smidgen better for white. Just a very small bit better for white. So I'll go for it. With the match lead, I think, you know, this is not a terrible turn of developments. Can I play c5 though? Because then he's pinned. c5 take, rook takes, rook takes, rook takes a6 is winning. So yeah, it seems good to play this move. I think bishop a6 might have been an inaccuracy. I guess you can play bishop c4 right now, but I'll take b6 and maybe I have a chance to consolidate an extra pawn eventually. This bishop on g2 is controlling a8, so if my a pawn ever becomes dangerous, that bodes well. If you're wondering what I'm drinking, it's espresso. Yeah. It's an iced Americano. <laughs> Three shots of espresso. Okay, so his point with that move, that's a good move, is that um, if I take, 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 and then take b6, I can't recapture on b6 when all is said and done. But I can play something like h4 now, can't I? Or maybe bishop f3? Probably h4 is a better idea. Now, if he could take on d6 if I do that. Huh. I wish I could take rook takes and then take on a7, but he has rook takes b1, so of course that's not going to work. Rook c6, could that possibly work? Hmm. If I don't find something involving rook c6, I'm just going to have to play like rook takes d8 and then take b6. Huh. Hmm, I think he's equalizing here. Now let's play rook c6. I'm gonna I'm gonna risk this move. I'll try it. I just don't think rook takes d8 is leading to much. So my weak back rank is holding me back a little bit. If bishop b7, I'll play rook c7 and hope that that yields something. Okay, he attacks my rook. Rook b4. Yeah, let's go rook b4. Keep the rook on the file. Come on, Nicholas. Let me, let me get in this move. You know you want to let me do that. I don't think he'll take now, because that allows me to repair my pawns a little bit. But I have a pass C pawn. He's got a kingside majority, 4 versus 3, but maybe my majority is a bit more valuable. Hmm. Rook C7, A5. 
Okay, let's just do h4. Not quite sure how this is going to shake out. Maybe rook c8 now. It's a decent move. Mm. I maybe should have taken on b8 on the previous move and then played... Well, he would have been threatening rook b1 in that case, so maybe not. Bishop e2. Strange looking move. All right, I gotta hurry now. A6 probably. Yep. Let's get the king out of the way. Ah, bishop e7 might be a plan. Let's try to do that. Bishop b7 and then take a6. First I need to defend c3 though. Okay, so let's do this. And then probably I gotta defend my f2 pawn. So something like this. Huh, I'm surprised you played rook d8. I thought he would keep the rook on the file. Um, Let's go c4. It's probably a good move. Introduce the idea of c5. That's a smart play by him. He could double up his rooks now. Yeah, awkward, awkward. Ah, play something. Hmm, I'm going to sack the exchange because I don't know what else to do. Uh, oh, I have this move. Play it. I almost flagged there. Take one of his rooks after this. I'm gonna go check. Try for something. <laughs> uh, I don't know if I can win this though. Oh, it's drawn, repeated. Ooh, okay. Yeah, that was pretty crazy at the end there. Um, I guess I'm okay with the draw. I think with the A and the C pawns, clearly I should be able to play for a win somehow, but that wasn't easy with the, tech, the second sticking away. And he got his king over. Mm. I'm lucky I had bishop e4. In full honesty, I didn't see that when I played rook takes d3. I just played rook takes d3 because otherwise rook takes f2 is coming. So that's that's the only reason. Someone said, John, why h4 on move 27? Well, I think I kind of had to play that because at some point I need to address my back rank issue. Because as it stands, uh, if that, ever they get a rook to the back rank, I would have to play bishop f1, and if they have that bishop on d3, they can take the bishop and win. Someone is hocking their mixtape. <laughs> All right, so next challenge. Ooh, we've got, we're kind of running out of time. We got about 10 or 15 minutes left, so that might translate to two or three games at the very maximum. All right, let's play a Benko Gambit. Oh, he's playing this? Okay, let's play c5. Hmm. I hope he doesn't play the uh, f4 line, because I don't know that. <laughs> okay, he's playing f4. Uh, let's go knight fd7. I know this is not the theoretically correct move, but it's one of the safer moves at black's disposal. I don't think Nicholas is a d4 player very often, though, so I'm hoping that his potential uh, lack of experience in these openings compensates for my clear lack of understanding of this f f4 variation in the Benoni. Uh, knight c7 or knight b4? Hmm. Let's go knight b4. I mean, now that he's played a4, at least I can utilize that square. Hmm. Knight f6, maybe? Yeah, let's go knight f6. We'll bring this knight back. Maybe I can sneak in bishop g4 and try to trade my light square bishop. Because in the Benoni, black has like one too many pieces uh, for their position. Their pieces like don't fit together very well. So playing a move like bishop g4 and trading it actually makes a lot of sense. Okay, so if knight h5, probably king h2 is going to be the answer. Let's go e6. I think undermining the center is timely. I don't see a drawback to this move. If he takes, I'll take with a bishop. Yeah, knight g5. Good move, I think. Knight h5, still king h2. Don't really want to retreat my bishop all the way to c8. 
a6, maybe, maybe. Yeah, let's play a6. Let's just kick that bishop back and see what it wants to do. We'll take here. d5, get this rolling. I mean, if I get a mobile center, I think I have great chances here. He's still a little underdeveloped. He doesn't move that bishop from c1 yet. I probably need to play king h8, get my king out of the way, so I don't run into future tactical issues on the diagonal. I talked to Kirsan for you, John. If you win this match, he says he'll give you half a GM norm. <laughs> don't think that's going to happen, but uh, I appreciate that, Space Llama. I appreciate you going to bat for Kirsan on my behalf. <laughs> Okay, so what's he up to with this? I can play c4. c4 and force the bishop back here. Let's do that because that looks like I'm kind of bowling him over. And then maybe rook c8, trying to go d4. Mm, maybe he can sneak in bishop e3 and try to put his bishop there. Uh, but this move is strong now, isn't it? Because I'm threatening knight g3, and I'm also threatening d4. So he might have to play... Oh, did I completely miss that move? I hate it when I do that. <laughs> uh, okay. I completely missed bishop takes h5. Did not even see that that move was possible. But actually my position is still not bad. I'm still threatening d4. If he plays bishop d4 to stop it, I can take, take, and then take on c2 with a fork on the queen and the rook. Why was I just oblivious to that bishop on e2? I got too excited. I took my eye off the ball. I got too excited about the idea I was about to embark on. Okay, so if rook e8, bishop d4 is his point. Bishop takes b2 I can play, but I think after rook b1, I'd, I'd have to play c3, which looks incorrect. Hmm. My pawn structure is ruined. Maybe knight c6. Knight c6, you can play c3, though. Hmm. I'm not liking this. All right, I'm going to do queen here, and then after bishop d4, I'm going to play queen e4 and try to attack c2 that way. It's one of the few active-looking ideas I can... Envision here. He could trade queens with queen d4. Okay, he's going to do this. I can check on... Uh, all right, we got to get our hands dirty now, though, because there's no alternative, really. Um, okay, let's come back here. With queen g4, I, I have to play queen g6. So my king has the potential to be in a world of hurt right now, but we'll see. Queen e1, subtle. Um, so he's hitting that knight that way. That's a good move. Well, he's also threatening queen e6. All right, I think I'm going to do this because I know he can take b4 and then take b7, but I, I really am not sure what else to do. He probably should take b4, otherwise knight c2 is coming. Really? You're just going to allow this move, huh? I think he missed that. Queen e5. Um, okay, so let's take. Hmm, just recaptures. Okay, let's do this. Okay, now at least I can trade the queens. That helps. Activate the rooks. I might just steal this game yet, guys. 13 seconds, anything is possible, of course, but I'm not sure I should have done that last move. Hmm. Let's come here, threaten some mate ideas. Oh, I didn't see that. Did not see that. He's going to come back. He's playing well. 
I'm still going to try to trade rooks and push my b-pawn like crazy. Run, b-pawn. Run like the wind. I think I'm going to win this game. Unreal. Complete swindle. Mm. Yeah, he missed knight c2. He should have taken on uh, b4. Where was that? Queen e1, wherever he played that move. Queen e1, I played queen g6. He should just do this. Take, take, take b7. Attacking a6, he's up a pawn, his king is safe. So that's a shame. We might have time for one more game. We'll see if he wants to challenge. Andrew Wagner says, what's the, what's the match score? Uh, yeah, three to two for me, I believe. Doesn't show it right here, but after the challenge, it will show it. I think I'm up a game. This might be the last game. We'll see what he says. Okay, let's go back to D4. Last game, he says. Okay. For all the marbles. We're having another Nimzo Indian. Queen C2 just defends C3. Yeah, this line again. All right, well, let's try to sneak in the G3 move. <laughs> yeah, Knight C6 once again. Best move, I'm pretty sure, in that position. He's playing this way. So this is like our first game. This turned out well for me in that first game. Hmm. D5, a little more of a direct approach. All right, let's take that. He might have to watch some knight g5 tricks, like now, for instance, if I, if I want to threaten stuff on the diagonal. Queen takes h7. So if knight g5, g6, take d5, or rook d1, maybe. Just seeing if there's any tactic I can utilize. There's also bishop g5. Now let's play knight g5. Threaten the, the cheapo mate. Hmm. So now rook d1. Yeah, rook d1 looks at least a little unpleasant for him. This knight's defended by my bishop, so not worried about that. F2 is a little weak, so if you like pops the queen out to F6, I got to do something about that. Play like knight E4, something along those lines. Got to get three norms to be GM. John has one. Yeah, I have one Grandmaster norm. I'm trying to play more GM norm tournaments. Uh, I'm a chess coach by profession, so. I'm usually quite busy with that, but uh, I'm trying to make some time to play and study more because I think I have the potential to make Grandmaster for sure. I just haven't put myself in an a, a scenario or given myself the opportunities to do it. So knight c6, okay. That's probably the right call. He's just focusing on development. So if e4, what is going on? e4 is pinning him. Is he going to play knight b4? Because that looks really awkward, but maybe. Rook takes d8, knight takes c2. So e4, knight b4, and if I move my queen, they can jump into d4 once again. Huh, maybe that's not so bad for them. All right, I'm going to take d5, first of all. And if I take with the rook, what's happening? Rook takes again, knight b4. Rook takes d8, takes c2. Mm. No, I don't believe that. Takes here. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna call this potential bluff. I'm a little scared about knight b4 or knight d4 and whatnot, but gotta be bold if you want to win matches, right? So my main calculation is if knight b4, rook takes d8, knight takes c2, let's say rook takes f8 check, and then whichever way he takes back, I have to play. Rook b1 to sidestep the attack on my rook. Or maybe, maybe I could play bishop takes b7. So probably he should take with the f8 rook when he does that. Yeah, I gotta play this move. Okay, so 
take a8 or take f8? I think take f8. Yeah, and he's going to take with his rook. Yeah, just like he did. Take b7, he takes a1, bishop e4. I don't know that I can trap that knight. That's not so easy. So let's just let's just bank the pawn. Pre-move this move. Whoa, am I lagging? Who's lagging? I think I'm lagging. I can't do anything. Oh, oh no. Can you guys still hear me? Okay. You disconnected. 32 seconds lost. Oh, great. <laughs> okay. Um, Bishop a6 attacking the pawn. Bishop f1. Bishop f1. Okay, so if rook here, I got to develop my bishop probably to avoid rook d1. I was afraid my stream was crashing, so I was panicked for a second. So if rook d8, okay, he's going knight d4 instead. Interesting. So he's going to play for compensation on the light squares, it looks to me. Can I play b4? b4, bishop e7. Yeah, I just don't have time to think about all that. Okay, take. We just got to go. My light squares are very weak now, though. If h6, knight e4, he has bishop d3. I don't like that. Maybe h6, rook e1, actually. Yeah, let's try this. This might work. If bishop c4, knight e4. Bishop d3, yeah, keeping control. Okay, so at least I can come here now. Just come here. Just put the knight on a good square. He can take it, and we're looking at a pretty drawish ending, I think. And he's going to push for the win. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to try to get this going. I know he can take d4. Yeah, this is a little annoying. Um, Alright, let's just do this. Yeah, that wasn't so good by me, but at least I simplified the position somewhat. Threatening to come into c7. Okay, let's bring this up. Let's give it a check. Mm -hmm. Let's bring our king over a little bit. Not sure about rook h8, so I won't play it. Mm, let's play b4. Can I always play rook h8 and remind him about that that weak pawn? Is that a, is that a pawn? Ooh, he got himself mated. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, it was actually 4-2 to two prior to this game. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That was kind of a unlucky mating. He was just pushing for the win. I know he wants to get back in this match. So, yeah, of course he didn't have to go on a suicide mission with his king. If I had more time, I would have tried to figure out some way to consolidate the pawn right here. Because the problem is my pieces are less coordinated than his, and I'm a little underdeveloped. I don't have that bishop out. So that's that's the issue I'm running into right now. Otherwise, I mean, I'm up a solid pawn, and I don't have a lot of, like, pawn targets, but he did a good job of pressuring me, like, bishop a6, knight d4. On the whole, it looked all right. So I think that's it. I think that's match. Um, I'll just type thanks for the games. I don't know if he's there. As I said at the beginning, if you missed, uh, Nicholas apparently has a scheduled, like, power outage he didn't know about until this morning. So the power in his building is going out right at the top of the hour and we're like four or five minutes away. So he might be uh, disconnecting very shortly. I'm just going to take a look at the chat for a moment. Some congratulations are coming in. Yeah, thank you guys so much. Hope you guys enjoyed those games. Um, pretty back and forth. There's a lot of action going on. Um, I think Nicholas got a little unlucky in some of the time scrambles. I might 
be in a slightly better position to like swindle my way out of positions than he is because I play a lot of bullet and I don't get the sense that he does. <laughs> so I, you know, I'm kind of resourceful and when the time comes down, like I can definitely, definitely uh, make it happen if need be. Um, but of course, Nicholas over the board, he's 2541. He's an excellent player. I could tell his knowledge of theory was quite good, especially in that English line that we got into. That was, didn't turn out so great. John, do people ask you to say, yeah, you betcha, when you tell them you're from Minnesota? No, I actually have a really mild Minnesota accent. My Minnesota accent is, it's only distinguishable on like certain words that I say, like bag. Uh, that's, that's a word that you could pick it up on. Otherwise, I have a very mild accent compared to a lot of Minnesotans. I mean, I live like close to the Twin Cities. It's major metropolitan area, so... Vince, thank you for uh, for tuning in from Europe, from Spain, I believe you said. Thanks, Tamar. Appreciate that. John, have you ever lost a match? Um, yeah, definitely. I mean, in dual commentary, I haven't done too many of them. But uh, I know the very first match I played with Kristoff, it wasn't very long. We only played a couple games, but I lost that one. Espresso is a performance-enhancing drug. <laughs> yeah, you might have a point there, Jacob. It's um like I said, it's like rocket fuel. It's 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 good stuff. My excuse is that it's early in the morning and I think I'm allowed to to drink it. Three shots of espresso, that's all I need. <laughs> Fide don't come calling. <laughs> John, please crush King's Crusher next time. I did play a match with King's Crusher, if you're interested. Look on my channel. It was a bullet match. John, are you going to stream more? I'm probably going to wrap this one up just for the sake of archiving, but uh, I might play a little bit more today or I might stream this weekend. So um, look for that soon. I definitely want to stream more often. So anyways, I think I'm going to wrap up the stream, guys. Once again, thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Hope you guys enjoyed that battle with Grandmaster Niklas Hushenbeth. And hopefully we can do it again. Uh, so thanks once again, guys. And I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.